Welcome back to Summit Racing Quick Flicks. I'm Al, and today I'm going to go over piston to valve clearance, just to make sure that your valves don't crash into your pistons. A few of the things you're going to need today is basic hand tools, uh, because you are going to remove the cylinder head, so you want to make sure you can loosen up the rockers, remove the valve covers, remove the cylinder head. Uh, one of the more important things you're going to need is a good set of dial calipers. You can pick some up at summitracing.com for under 30 bucks. Uh, I think these are performance tools under $30. Summit Racing has a, has a set of dial calipers for $25. And the last, find a kindergartner and borrow their Play-Doh. So the first step is, is you're going to want to go ahead, remove the valve covers like we have here. I went ahead and removed the intake manifold. Now I'm going to start to remove or loosen up the rockers. After that, I'm, after I loosen up all the rockers, I'm going to go ahead, pull the push rods out. I want to make sure I keep them in order, so that way I know which intake and exhaust valve they go to. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the bolts on the cylinder head. So that way I can go ahead, remove the cylinder head, but still keep the rockers in place. As you can see, I've gone ahead, removed the cylinder head, and I went ahead and also set cylinder number one to top dead center. Now you're going to grab your new gasket and your dial calipers, and you're going to find the uncompressed thickness of this gasket. You're going to then go to the manufacturer's directions, find the compressed thickness, and subtract that from that number you just found. Then you're going to write that down. We'll use that number later. Go ahead and grab some of your either modeling clay, or in this case, Play-Doh, and you're going to spread it across the top of the piston. You want it about a quarter inch thick, uh, maybe about half inch wide or so. This is a little wider. I want to make sure that I cover the entire uh, distance across the piston so that way I get both the intake and exhaust valves. So now that you have the clay on that first piston, you can go ahead Grab the gasket that you're going to use that you just measured, place that, grab your cylinder head, put that back on. Now, you don't need to install all of the valve train since we're just dealing with the first cylinder. And you also don't need to install all of the head bolts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install the first eight so that way things are nice and snug. In, in that first cylinder, and I don't have to torque everything down. You, like I said, you just want to make sure everything's nice and snug up against the block. Okay, so you're going to want to go ahead and use solid lifters for this. The reason why you're going to want to use solid lifters is because hydraulic lifters are going to bleed out and they're not going to give you the proper reading that you're going to look for. You only need to just for that first cylinder so that way you can go ahead and check the piston to valve clearance. Now, like I said, since we're only using the first cylinder, I'm just installing the push rods in that first cylinder and I'm going to go ahead and set this to zero lash. I, I do have hydraulic lifters in here a, on a regular basis, but because these are solid lifters, zero lash, no preload. So I'm going to go ahead, and if you, ha if you haven't seen our how to set valve lash video, go ahead and watch that over here. But I'm going to go ahead and just set them right now.
All right, so a quick recap of where we're at. Uh, I removed the cylinder head. I put some clay on piston number one, set everything to top dead center on, on cylinder number one. Since we're using hydraulic lifters in this motor, I removed the lifters in both the exhaust and intake on cylinder number one, replaced them with solid lifters, set these rockers to zero lash, no preload. Now, because we have everything just, just bolted, not torqued, just snug to the block, I'm going to rotate the engine over twice. So that way we get good a good impression on everything. Now I can go ahead, unbolt the cylinder head. You want to carefully uh, peel everything off and we're going to take a look and see what kind of impression we have on that clay. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've rotated the engine over twice carefully unbolted and remove the cylinder head. You want to remove it carefully because you don't want the clay to be sticking to the valves and give, your, give yourself a false reading. Went ahead, removed the gasket. Now I'm going to grab a knife and I'm going to carefully cut the intake valve. Get a good cross section. You want to be very careful not to, again, squish or change anything. And what we're looking, here, uh, looking for here is we're looking for a thickness of 80 thousandths. So that way we know that, that the piston is not going to connect with the valve. So we're going to go ahead and take the measurement of the smallest, at the smallest thickness of our clay that we cut. And we came up with a measurement of 130 thousandths, which is plenty of clearance on the intake valve. The minimum clearance on the intake valve is 80 thousandths. Now one thing we want to remember is that we are going to take the difference in the measurement of the thickness of the gasket minus the compressed thickness and we're going to go ahead and subtract that from that 130 thousandths and we do want to make sure we're within that, that acceptable range of tolerance. And then we can go ahead do the same thing, cut ourselves a cross section of the exhaust valve. Again, being very careful not to squish it. And with the exhaust valve, we're looking for a thickness of a hundred thousandths. Okay, now we again measure the thinnest part of our clay. And we're at almost 305 thousandths, which is plenty of thickness. There, again, remember we want to go ahead and subtract that number, the gasket number that we found earlier, where, where you take away the compressed thickness from the thickness that you found earlier. And the minimum exhaust clearance you want here is 100 thousandths. And like I said, we're at 305, so we have plenty of clearance here. All right, so we figured out we have enough clearance on our engine, so we can go ahead and complete our build. Now, most of the time you're going to find out any clearance issues, uh, piston to valve clearance issues is going to happen about 10 degrees before top dead center, and it may be different depending on any adjustments and timing that you may make. Now, some things that you may be able to do if you happen to find that you do have piston to valve clearance is you can go ahead, take the pistons, take them to a machine shop, and have them uh, fly cut there. We also have die grinders that you can actually put into the cylinder head and notch out just a little bit larger notches into the piston. Or you can go ahead and change out the pistons. But before you make any big decisions like that, I highly encourage you to call us or go ahead and leave a question in the comments section below. Hit subscribe to stay up to date on our latest Quick Flicks videos and watch some of the other videos. Thanks for watching.